broadcasting live worldwide. Talkline Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. And now, you're listening to Talkline with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Here is your host. Right now, we are back, and our special guest is Rabbi Mendel Steiner. He works in the Garmin District. He was verbally accosted and ran into a bank. He works in the garment industry. So, good luck. Thank you for joining us. I get to luck. So, tell us what happened to you on Friday. So, Friday I was getting into work 10.30 in the morning, as I do every day. First of all, I would like to thank, before I forget, Ezra Freelander for connecting so I can get the story out. And I thank Ezra too. Morning, He's was, one that sent me that his good friend Remendel Steiner uh, was attacked. So thank you, Ezra. And so what happened to you on Friday morning? Yeah, so I parked my car on 40th Street and 7th Avenue. That's the parking lot I use. And I walk to, on 7th Avenue till 38th Street every single day. That's my route I take. And unfortunately, since COVID, I'm very used to. I have all these homeless people. It looks Manhattan looks like Los Angeles today. Do they keep bothering you, coming for money? And with bothering you, it's all different things. I'm used to these people coming over to you and talking to you. And we just ignore them, and I continue walking. But uh, this guy kept on talking to me. I was on the phone, and I wasn't responding. And he was getting annoyed at me, so he was on a bike. So he decided to drive his bike right in front of me, so I couldn't continue to walk. And he starts asking me, why don't you answer me? And I said, sir, I'm on the phone now. I can't talk to you right now. And he says to me, but I need to know why are you killing my innocent Palestine children? I ignored him. He uh, continued talking on the phone because I wanted to ignore him. And I wanted to keep walking. And he wouldn't let me walk. He says, what? You, can't, you, can't, you can't leave. You've got to answer me, he tells me. So I moved to the side. He was blocking me. So I moved to the side. I tried walking. I walked a few steps. He moved on with the bike, and he blocked me again. He was trying to push me to the side of the it's – it's a big street. It's a very wide sidewalk. He was trying to push me towards the side to the buildings. I guess he figured over there it's easier to attack me, and nobody would help. So he, I kept on walking. He kept on blocking me. And I saw that he was serious. He put his hand into his pocket, so I started getting very, very nervous. And I was totally traumatized by then. And, and was, and was, anybody, else, was anybody else in the street near you? Was well, anybody there were people st- walking on the street, but nobody was noticing anything. Did you tell I the person did, you I wasn't told on the telephone? Him. I didn't want to get into a confrontation with him. Did you, with him. did you tell the person on the phone to call the police that you were in danger? So the, the person on the phone was actually three hours away from, from Manhattan. Oh, okay. I wasn't doing anything, but he heard what was happening. He said, what's going on? What's going on? Anyways, um, started looking around to see if there's guards. But supposedly, they're supposed to be in the garment district. They're supposed to have guards all over. I couldn't find nobody. So I kept on walking. I, so then came to my mind that there's a bank on the corner of, of 39th Street. I still had a half a block to, to make sure that I can get there alive. So somehow I was playing around with him. He was blocking me. And then I just gave a snuck out and I started running. Uh-huh. And he says, what do you think? You're go- Where are you running? Where are you running? You think you're going to run, run away? I have a bike. I'm going to come and get you. And I, st- I ran into the bank. He came into the bank after me with a bike, but he... He couldn't find me right away, and I was also, I came into the bank, I ran, I know there's always, I always use that Chase Bank, I normally do the guards uh, next to the tellers, so I ran over there, but I saw nobody was there, so I said, you know what, let me run to the other side where the cubicles are. Most of them were empty, there was two, three where there was sitting some ladies, I figured they're not going to be able to help me, so the last one, there was a guy sitting, I quickly ran into his cubicle, and I told him this guy is following me, and he Ben, I think we have. Meantime, a, you go ahead, he man. went out at the front of the cubicle. He told me, "Go in the back of the cubicle. I'll go out." And in the meantime, the guy on the bike noticed already 
where I am and which cubicles. He came speeding up with his bike in the bank, and he came over to me. And again, he pulled out an Israeli flag, and he says, I'm going to kill you, and tell me why you're killing my children. And he wanted to fight with me. If not the guy in the bank was there, he for sure would have hit me. Wow. And how old was this person? The guy was, a, I would say, like a 20-year-old. He looked dark-skinned. Very well be he was a, he was an Arab. Uh huh. Now, so what happened with this other fellow? Did did he back away? To so have... he he didn't want to leave. He didn't want to leave, and they they some other guys in the bank came there. So there were three four guys already, and he told me if you're not going to leave, we're going to call a security guard. There was no security guard in the bank. And at the end, he said, "I'm going to leave, but I'm going to wait for you outside. I'm going to get you, and I'm going to kill you." Those were the words. And he said in front. He said, and he, said in fr- he, he said in front of the people in the bank. In uh, front of the people in the bank, exactly. So, did anybody say anything? Did anybody call the police? Went out, and of course, I was not going to go out. Right. They were very nice. The people in the bank, and they took me downstairs to have the client um, center over there. The and they asked me if I want to go down there. They took me down there. They gave me. They offered me some water. They wanted to make me feel comfortable. To be honest, I was so traumatized. It took me about close to 10 minutes to think, why didn't I call the police? That's when I started getting, starting to get back my mind. I called the police and I finally called the police about 10 minutes later. And I said I was just attacked by a guy on the street and he threatened to kill me. I had to run into the bank for shield. And the guy's supposedly is waiting outside for me to come out. He wants to kill me. They asked me if I was hurt. I said, no. They asked me, do you know the reason he wants to kill you? I said, yes, because I'm Jewish. And he's saying I'm killing his innocent children. And they said, okay, we'll have, we'll have some police come over. After 20, 30 minutes, nobody came. I called again. And they updated. So, okay, we'll update your call. They took the information from me again. They'll update. 20 minutes later, again. I waited an, close to an hour and a half in the bank. The police never came. Wow. I couldn't, and it was Friday, I was Shabbos, and I, I had to go to work, so I called somebody to come escort me, and I went over to the guys in the bank, I said, look, I, I, my office is right across the street, I'm going to have somebody come pick me up, and you call me when the police comes, and they took my number, I was in the office till 2 o'clock, and they never called me, the police never came. Now, what time does it transpire? In the morning, that they, that this Palestinian thug was accosting you. What time? It happened ten thirty in the morning. Ten thirty in the morning, and the, you never heard from the police again. Never heard from the police again. Now I would assume that nobody took a picture of this individual. So what I did was that later in the afternoon, late late in the afternoon, I saw posted on Yeshiva World News that Yanki Meyer arranged a meeting with with a lot of uh, Askanim. And they, to beef up security, and I saw some people that I know from the Baba Vakahila, Chaim Fleischer, um, was by the meeting, so it came to my mind right away, let me call Chaim Fleischer and ask him what needs to be done. So he got me on the phone with a conference with Yanki Meyer. Yanki Meyer said he couldn't do anything right now, which is also very disturbing, actually. He said, we'll talk on Sunday morning. Um, then he went and he called Penny Ringel. Penny Ringel is a guy in Borough Park. I see this guy in Belgium, Kahila. He works for the mayor, and he took it very serious. He right away took my phone number that I gave to 911. He called me back within a few minutes. I traced your call. I see you called 911, and I already put in a message to the to the the head inspector who was in charge of that district and the police department, and I'm going to have him call you, but. He hasn't called me. So it was late afternoon. I closed my phone for Shabbos, so I don't know. Huh. So wow. far, he didn't call me, but that's where it's up to right now. There's a shocking story in Midtown. The police didn't respond. It's a respond. shocking story. Uh, to be honest, I'm very traumatized. I don't even know if I could go to work next week. I don't know if I can get myself to go to the city again. And I came home. My, I told them my, my family the story. They didn't know anything. I didn't want, want to tell them until I got home. They didn't sleep Shabbos. They're all traumatized from the story. And they don't want to let me go to the city again. So what's going to be? So, Wow. Uh, it's just shocking that nobody responded. And 
and that this can happen like that. Now, as far as we know, did this man linger, or did anybody from the bank notice if the man was lingering in front of this of the bank? If you went um, downstairs, not because sure, I was I was downstairs. I stayed there for the entire hour and a half that I was in the bank. I just waited downstairs. Now, when you're walking not down the sure. street, you're wearing a hat. You're wearing a jacket. You're I I, I don't. I wear my jacket. I I have a beard. I'm a Hasidic younger man, so. Even if I put on a cap on my head, I'm and they would know you're Jewish, Jewish right? Right. So they target yeah, because they you're Jewish. Help me. Yeah, it's hard to hide that. Huh? And I walk with a jacket in the city. And so. we have, and this, I to repeat the question they asked. We have no picture of this individual. Oh, so the bank could give me the footage of the whole story. Oh, I'm from sure the they security have the camera. From the oh, that's good. That's yes, I never thought of that. But huh? the, but the guy in the bank told me that I first need a police report. Once I get a police report, we can call the security department of Chase Manhattan Bank, and they would give us the the footage. But if the police doesn't come and I don't have a police report, I can't get the footage. Hmm. So are you going to? So what's happening? Are you going to try to reach out to the police again? Is somebody in the community going to try to reach? Um, out? Where does it so stand right now? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to call Penny Ringel again, and he'll he'll guard me. And Yankee Meyer told me on Friday that Sunday morning. He will try to get the the footage from the bank. He will help me with that. So we'll see tomorrow if we can do some progress. Please keep us informed. It's very disturbing that here you are walking down the street. And you have this man just threatens to kill you, and 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 nobody responds. I mean, in the bank they were helpful to you, but the police didn't respond. And exactly, uh, very very disturbing. So I appreciate your sharing your story with us. And uh, we want to be on top of the situation because we're seeing more attacks on Jews because they're Jews. Nothing to do with Israel. This is just, and the whole war is a war against the Jew, and the anti-Semitism is reaching unprecedented levels. So That is correct. I, maybe my, my mistake was when I called the police, I shouldn't have said I was Jewish. They may have came a little sooner. Well, the, well, I know the Asian is a lot of more Asian violence, but the fact is, though, in the case of the other gentleman that we had on Joey Borgen, the police, and I've spoken to members in the police department, are, are working. They had one suspect, I believe another suspect is in the works, and there are some others that they're working very hard to solve that, but that got a lot of attention. It was all the media. Your story did not get media attention, so maybe that's why they're not paying as much attention to it. But we're hoping now that it's out. Maybe, but but I also feel I I saw today also in Shiva World News that Aguda had something with the mayor and they're going to arrest everybody. But I think the problem is that they're coming after. Yeah, somebody attacks you, they get the footage to try to arrest the person. But the security needs to be out there that these guys should feel that if they do it, they will get caught on the spot. They're not afraid because they know that there's no security out there. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. Coming and the, and the af, af, after the after the stories, I mean, it's better than nothing. But really, what we need is beforehand. We need security. We need security and we on need the street. Enhanced security on the street. We need more police protection. It should be noticeable. People should feel safe to go on the street, and know that if somebody wants to attack them within fifty feet, there is a cop standing who's going to come and help me. Rabbi Mendel Steiner, we appreciate you being with us. We're hoping that you don't that uh, that you're able to go to work, and we and we want to make sure that we try to bring this person to justice. And if there's security footage of it, it should be released. And I think some some sunshine, which is what we're doing tonight, will help maybe bring this propel it. And I will raise it also with uh, some contacts in the police department. But uh, thank you for sharing your story with us, and we hope that never happens again. And thank you very much for listening to my story. Rabbi Mendel Steiner, as you heard, uh, works in the garment industry, was accosted by a Palestinian man who threatened to kill him because of what's happening in Israel. And a uh, chilling, frightening story could happen to anybody. And that's why we have to really focus on it and keep this in the public for So uh, thank you, Rabbi Mendel. Good vach. Uh, good vach. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk Line Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talk Line Network and Talk Line's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, 
please call 212-769-1925.